Ah, yes, how do you do? Sir Adam Lexington, steam-powered adventurer, at your service. I have been asked by our mutual acquaintance, Master Omniviewer, to introduce today's film reel, given my association with the genre known as steampunk. Even though Master Omniviewer considers himself an aficionado more of the strange creatures that surround me, he does have a soft spot for this genre. Although, for me specifically, I would consider it more a way of living. But we cannot all be perfect now, can we? The Omniviewer has read quite a few pieces of steampunk literature and wishes to share with you what he considers to be the strangest of them all. In his own words, if your only familiarity with steampunk is airships, corsets, and gears, then you have no idea just how bizarre it can get. So, he is offering you five different examples. This is the part where his voiceover is supposed to take over, but, uh... What? Apparently I need to tell some sort of sign-off or... Very well. Please enjoy the list of the five strangest works of steampunk fiction as far as Master Omniviewer has read. Number one. Infernal Devices by K.W. Jeter. This strange little yarn begins with a man named George Dower, who has garnered somewhat of a bad reputation as of late. He's been accused of treason to the crown, sexual debauchery, and conspiring with the Beast of the Apocalypse, among various other things. He's writing this book to hopefully set the record straight and prove that he was just a victim of circumstance, some poor soul constantly in the wrong place at the wrong time. What follows is a wild journey across Europe in which George encounters religious zealots, devious suffragists, a pair of anachronism-spewing con artists, his superior mechanical double, and a doomsday cult with a device designed to literally smash the world to pieces. This book is densely packed with constant twists and turns, all told through a possibly unreliable narrator, and you can't truly grasp how strange it is unless you read it for yourself, which I highly recommend doing. Number 2. The Lotus Wars Trilogy by J. Kristoff. Here we go with some Japanese-flavored steampunk. This series is set in an alternate world where the island empire of Shima is the only true superpower, and it has pretty much screwed the rest of the planet over by hunting species to extinction and using machines which pump black lotus smoke into the sky. Clearly, this is a regime in need of a good toppling. Our story follows Yukiko, a 16-year-old girl who has lost much to the empire, and Buru, one of the last living griffins who has a telepathic link with the girl. Together, they unexpectedly become the figureheads of the Rebellion, although the closer the final battle draws, the harder it becomes to know who is trustworthy. Now, yeah, this might sound kind of like the Hunger Games as far as having a teenage girl overthrow a dictatorship, but I can assure you it has enough of its own identity that I would never call this a cheap imitation. It's also definitely not a young adult novel, given the frequently disturbing, occasionally graphic things which happen to the characters. Nonetheless, this is a darn good read, and quite a strange one too, with its combination of steampunk and Japanese fantasy. It consists of Storm Dancer, Kin Slayer, and End Singer in that order. So what are you waiting for? Track these books down and read them for yourself. Number 3. The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen by Alan Moore and Kevin O'Neill. I'm kind of breaking my pattern here since this one is a graphic novel rather than a prose novel, but it's so steeped in literature that I have to include it. The League is a Victorian-era superhero team comprised of literary figures. Specifically, Mina Murray from Dracula, Alan Quatermain from King Solomon's Mines, Captain Nemo from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, The Invisible Man, and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, the last two hailing from the books which bear their respective names. 
They are hired to protect the British Empire from unusual threats, be they warlords like Fu Manchu or the Martians from War of the Worlds. If you've only seen the movie, well, the movie isn't as bad as most people say, but it doesn't get half as crazy as the comic. Packed with bizarre imagery, unusual bonus material, and so many literary in-jokes per page that entire books have been written just to keep track of them all, this comic is something which must be experienced to truly be believed. Number 4. The Newbury and Hobbes Mysteries by George Mann. Set in an alternate timeline where Queen Victoria has been kept alive by artificial means into the early 20th century, this ongoing series of books follows a pair of special investigators for the Crown, Sir Maurice Newbury and Miss Veronica Hobbs. From there, things get weird. Part of what makes these novels so unusual is just how much stuff is crammed into each one, and how all of these different elements always manage to fit together. For example, the first book of the series, The Affinity Bridge, has a crashed airship, malfunctioning automatons, occult mysticism, psychic visions of the future, and, I kid you not, a zombie plague. The whole time I was reading, I thought there was no way man could possibly make all of these disparate elements fit together into a single cohesive story, and yet he pulled it off. Though to tell you how would spoil the whole thing. Also worth noting is Man's Ghost Novels, a superhero series set in the future of the same universe, though it's not officially on this list because it's more accurately described as diesel punk rather than steampunk. Still, if you're up for a different kind of mystery series, the Newbury and Hobbes mysteries should be right up your alley. Number 5. The Other Log of Phileas Fogg by Philip Jose Farmer. So I'm guessing you're familiar with Jules Verne's book Around the World in 80 Days. As far as Verne's bibliography goes, it's one of his more grounded stories, containing no futuristic submarines or subterranean seas with battling monsters. It's also riddled with plot holes, large unresolved gaps of time, and just plain anomalous head-scratchers. Enter Philip Jose Farmer and the other log of Phileas Fogg. Written as a companion piece to Verne's original novel, the other log explains the anomalies by suggesting Fogg and his man Passepartout were agents of an alien race, and their global trek was actually a secret mission in an ongoing war against another alien race, among whose ranks is none other than Captain Nemo from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Oh, and the book also purports to be actual history, not fiction. It's a good introduction to a much larger universe concocted by Farmer. Ah, uh, but that's a tale for another day. And that would be the end of it. Why are we still rolling? Uh, sir, I did not become a steam-powered adventurer just by standing in front of one of those tiny digital cameras. I must be off. My airship is refueled, and I must be exploring. Very well, very well. I am told that I am to encourage you, the audience, to make any recommendations you have for strange works of steampunk, and leave them in the comment section. And if you enjoyed this video, to share it with others who might share our particular interest. Is that enough? Very well. Thank you all for watching.